Hey, 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 what's going on out there, Falcons World, Falcons Nation, man? What's going on? Welcome to the 95 North Sports Machine on this Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying their uh, their Sunday with their loved ones, man. I know this is barbershop talk, and all the barbershops across the world are closed, but like we, I've said last week, not this barbershop. Open for business on Sunday as usual, and welcomes, wel- walk-ins are welcome. And we have a very okay, special so welcome. Well, I, I need my hairline shaped up. I think you're straight, bro. You passed the test of the hairline situation. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get you that razor. You know, it's a little hot razor. You know. Oh you know, damn, you know, man, this. damn. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. I'm talking about the hairline test. Leave me alone over here. Oh man, hey, look at yeah. that, man. Hey, I'm a guest. Be nice. Be nice. Right, right. Well, okay, okay. I'll be nice. Okay, I leave it alone. Oh shit, you got too bad. much, man. But with that said, man, we'd like to welcome Clint Goss to the building, man. We definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate you coming on to the show, man. Uh, so if you can, uh, Clint, just speak to the world for a little bit, man. Let them know a little bit about yourself, uh, how you became a Falcons fan, and what you're doing, uh, what uh, what you're up to these days. Yeah, I'll be real quick. Uh, got started being a Falcons fan probably roughly around 02. Uh, so definitely got, got at least two decades worth at this point. Uh Covered the Falcons last year. It was my first year covering the team at 99-1 WDJY uh, and had a really good time with that, keeping that going. Uh, we're on live Mondays throughout the year. Um, it, most of my content can be found uh, written or radio uh, on Twitter. I should put my handle here at the bottom, but it's NFL Draft Dome. You can find it under my name as well. Uh mm-hmm. You know, otherwise, I'm doing my NFL draft coverage at Stadium Rant year-round. So, uh, as far as my Falcons fandom, been a fan since 2 but been covering the team uh, for a little over a year. Man, that's wonderful, wonderful. man. Wonderful. wonderful, wonderful. Always appreciate, uh, you know, good content out there just and, and great perspectives about the team, man. There's so much to talk about. In such little time, man, we're going to condense everything as much as we can. Definitely, you know knowing that today is a holiday. But shout out to everybody that's in the chat. And Smitty will go ahead and bring up some of the folks that are in the chat, and we'll salute them right as we go Whitty along. It, it. Miss nah. Ed Brown is in the building. That's the wifey, man. Yeah, well, shout out to his sister. Go ahead, brother. She always tuned in. Salute. Um, mm-hmm. It was shout out to Jaden Knight, man, my Twitter buddy, man. He called me sure. home. So, hey, shout out to Jaden, man. Our boy Jamal D is in the house. Yo. Just the building. Swish your sweets. Yes, sir. Uh, C Dub in the house. Oh man! Oh, uh, bro, big bro, John Higgins. Lord hey, John, have mercy, for that John. Big chicken plate today. Uh, <laughs> Ed Mitchell, what's up, my dude? Timothy what's Davis happening? in Southside, Ricky. Um, yes, sir. Everybody in the house, man. Let's get this thing rolling, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's Hello, do it. Man. <laughs> man, so hey, we're a month away from the NFL draft, and as we all know, the pairing is there: Coach Raheem Morris, Kirk Cousin, but. Chris, you have a very interesting question, man, that I like to get these uh, other minds involved in as well. And right. that is, who is under the most pressure to succeed? Is it Kirk Cousins or is it Coach Raheem Morris? So I will start with Clint. I think it's Cousins. Uh, you know, you start a certain timeline over here with Ra that I think, you know, doesn't carry over for Fontenot as far as that too in the front leadership. I, you know, I think it's Cousins, if, if nothing else, the checkbook. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you've really gone in there. All this pressure's been put into getting the quarterback solved and, and kind of this setting up a window. I mean, look, you you don't bring in a 36-year-old quarterback to say, well, we're, we're playing for the five, six-plus year plan. No, you've opened a window. I think it's Cousins, no doubt, because I think there is a – there's already an established floor for Ra. He can't go any lower than 7-10. and 10. We've shown that as a team. We're, that right. floor is established. There's no floor established for Cousins coming in here. I mean, what, what you're going to say Ritter was his floor? You know, that's not really fair. You know, no, right. uh, that, that's not <laughs> comparable. And, and as far as the ceiling, it's it's – I think there's a lot more risk here versus a raw. Uh, that was a little more of the, as far as the head coaching market and how you played it, I don't want to say safer play, but that wasn't the bold, risky move going and hiring Raheem Morris to come be the Falcons head coach. Going inside right. of Cousins was being bold. So I, I think more lights are there 
for me. Mm. Right. Yeah, I definitely feel that because of his playoff record as well. People are going to talk about that. Like you just said, the price tag, people are concerned about the money, even though it's really only like a two-year deal when you really break it down. Mm-hmm. But him coming in off the injury, it's a lot that goes to Cousins that's coming in right now, you know. So I definitely understand that. You know, Coach Rob, people talk about his, you know, um, winning percentage as a coach and past experience. But, Berto, you touched on something uh, earlier before we mm-hmm. uh, came alive, and I'm going to let you get to that as well. But I, I'm going with Kirk Cousins as well, too, man. Mm-hmm. He has to, um, like he said, back in like 2011, he has the 2011, 2012, he has to prove people wrong. Mm-hmm. And he pop, he still has to prove people wrong or prove yeah. people right, however you want to uh, take mm-hmm. it. But he still has to do it. So I'm yeah. going to roll with Kirk Cousins as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement to that as well, man. I think Kirk Cousins faces the most pressure to just obviously – add on to the squad with his skill set. You know, he walks into a situation similar to what he had uh, in Minnesota, established players at at the, you know, skill set positions. You talk Bijan, you talk Kyle, you talk Drake London, you know, kind of the same situation Kurt had in Minnesota with, with that three-headed monster over there at one point, Hawkinson, uh, Dalvin Cook, and Justin Jefferson. So the, the pressure's definitely on him. Uh, even, with, even with the Achilles injury and what he's coming off of to definitely, you know, continue continue the ascension that he had in in minnesota um so pressure is definitely on him i think for coach raheem morris i think we're, we're all going to be in line to viewing the best uh the best version of coach raheem morris that uh that we haven't uh, been accustomed to seeing he's been a coach through rankings it hasn't been all that successful but when you go out you know when you're out of that coaching limelight for a while and you're able to win super bowls and, and mm-hmm. surround yourself with, with with coaching staffs that are you know just brilliant you know you talk about sean McVay, even zach robinson himself with the rams so working with those guys i can already you know notice it in coach Ra's energy that he's he's appreciative of this second opportunity uh, to be a head coach again. So with all that said, I think the best version of Coach Ross is to come. And I'm, I'm just happy that us as Falcon fans are, are probably going to be in witness to that. Uh, Smitty, I know you popped out for a little bit. If you want to just uh, give your thoughts real quick on that question, and it will roll on to our next segment. Well, y'all know I like to throw curveballs. And I'm going to just say, um, I think uh, Tierra Fontenot uh, no. is under the most pressure. And the reason why I say that is he's been here three years. He's had a chance to get the players that he wanted the last three. Drafts have been big offensive stars. So now he had to make all make it all come together as one. He's doing that with Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins has pressure as well because he has the $180 million contract. But at the end of the day, Terry Fontenot is putting his team together along with Ryan Morris. So mm-hmm. I think Terry is the most under pressure to win right now. And this is a win-now team. If you had a win-now roster, you're expected to win. You're expected to produce. Uh, so the general manager will get all the pressure in the world um, right. at the end of the day. Mm. And then and then for Coach Raheem, he's inheriting a good team, too. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like overall, if uh, right. top to bottom, if you look at the Rams roster last year and our roster last year, I think you go with our roster over his. So he's coming into better talent, I believe so as well. So. Um, it's, it may be pressure to produce because, I mean, we just had Arthur Smith and he couldn't utilize the talent correctly. So he does have to utilize the talent correctly as well. So, But still, yeah, Kirk Cousins, it's just so much pressure on him. People really don't believe in Kirk Cousins, even though they're riding for him because he's the quarterback. They still don't believe in him, you know, mm-hmm. despite what the numbers say. I think two good points that have been said thus far is, you know, you kind of mentioned Ra and his previous head coaching experience. That Bucks regime can be thrown in the trash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I don't put any stock mm-hmm. into that. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the point you were talking about all the tools being there. You, know, you can kind of pl- apply that to both, but I mean, you know, you just talk about Cousins. It's you know, particularly once you go add another receiving weapon in this draft, offensively, because you know we don't really need to discuss the defense with him as much as. Right. What's missing for him? You know, that offensive yeah. line unit is going to be as good as he's ever had. That running game is mm-hmm. going to be the best he's ever had with respect to Dalvin Cook, with it being a two headed monster here. Zach Robinson being the perfect fit schematically for him. You know, I know mm-hmm. KFC was as well, but all that just to say, and 
you know, you talk about the kind of past experience and, and having something to prove between the two of them. Mm-hmm. I think the the past playoff record and the prime time record is a little more damning on Cousins right now than say Roz Bucks regime because just like I just said, oh, you can kind of toss that and, and more focus on the Super Bowl run with the Rams and being the right. coordinator of that defense right. versus that. You can't really do that as much with Cousins. It's like, no, no you had some, you had some good weapons in Minnesota and some good opportunities. And it's, it's yeah. I think there's, there's more heat on him in terms of your resume coming in here and needing it to look a little different. That's Yeah, and cool. you got to think, too, with Raheem Morris, he was in his early 30s when he got his first coaching job. Facts. So mm-hmm. Anybody that age. So – I think you get a pass for that, you know, that type of big thing. Like you said, throw that in the trash. You talk about a guy in his early 30s. Uh, Sean McVay succeeded, but look how long it took him to get there. So yeah. now Raheem Morris has a chance to do that too. Yeah, man. And Raheem even said it himself. He was pretty much an arrogant guy. You know what I mean? He was a young coach. I mean, come on now, you know, getting that big of a title at that young of an age. I believe he's a lot more humble now. You know, and he believed, like Berto said, man, I believe we're going to get the best version of Coach Ra with this uh, roster, talent, and everything that he has uh, inherited. And Hmm. for Kirk Cousins, I mean, for him, we have a good offense, and we're going to add to it. I definitely believe that the Falcons are going to still get a wide receiver somewhere in this draft to add to that offense as well. Yeah, man, to add to that offense as well, because we got so many guys on one-year deals. The only one that's really like lengthy is uh, outside of the rookie contract for Drake is Danielle Moon. Danielle Moon, right? Yeah. Very valid, man. Appreciate you guys' opinion on that, man. We're going to move on to our next segment before we click on to mock draft time, but we're going to touch on real quick this Hassan Reddick situation going to the New York Jets. Uh, New York Jets, man, no stranger of acquiring, you know, you know, top tier athletes and the compensation was ridiculous, man. I think it was what, a future third or something, something to that degree. Chris, or Smith, if you have the details on that, please, please um, go ahead and shout that out. But one thing that is uh, con- uh, consistent with this, the Falcons missed out on another edge rusher. Uh, we're for three in the department. And, and as we were all talking uh, backstage you talk about the Montez sweepstake. We fell short on that. Although Daniel Hunter, we were in the in the talks to acquire him, mm. couldn't you know couldn't finish the deal, and now missing out on Hassan Reddick uh, to a squad that really needs it. Uh, let's be honest, man. I know that yeah. collectively last year, um, you know we finished with forty two sacks under a different a different scheme with Ryan Nielsen. Now we kind of backtrack a bit, go back into this three four base, a la the days of Dean Pease. But you insert Jimmy Lake and Coach Raheem Morris to go ahead and guide that group. Uh, as, as as we noted, you know, Coach Raheem being a defensive coordinator with the Rams last year was able to get sack numbers um, out of out of rookies. Uh, and yeah. Tristan Smitty and even Clint, I spoke on this various of times before before free agency started. Sometimes it's it's quality over quantity or quantity over quality. Right. Yes. And, you know, right. adding one premier edge rusher, you know, really won't make a world of a difference. As we all know, this is a copycat league. Indianapolis just showed us that they can do the same thing without a clear cut number one edge rusher to a tune of 50, 50 plus sacks in a year. So can right. can and will this Falcons draft this uh, this month coming up really shape the defense for the years to come? Raheem Morris did an incredible job with Kobe Turner and Bryant Young last year. 17 sacks combined between both gentlemen, and they were rookies. So, and, and it's something that we're, as as fans of football that we all are on here, it's weird not to hear Aaron Donald leading a sack, a, a Rams team in sacks. So, are we going into that? Possibly. But Hassan Reddick to the Jets just makes the, you know, the Jets probably a yeah. favorite in the AFC East. Uh, but I'd like to give you guys' take on that real quick, starting with Clint, please. There's a couple angles to go there. I think quick, you know, looking at it from the Jets' perspective, man, how much of a black eye does that make that Will McDonald first-round pick look? Oh, my God. Reach. Mm-hmm. That, that's a black eye moment. Uh, yeah. You, you yep. have established through his production, his play, Salah's trust in him as a guy who likes to overindulge in edge depth. Mm-hmm you pretty much established you view him as a rotational at this point. Uh, that was a black eye moment. 
that they chose yeah. to do. You know, getting Reddick for a conditional 2026 20, third felt like a ham right. sandwich. <laughs> and and gets a bit frustrated. Yeah. And I get it. Uh, you know, I jumping over it'll be the last thing I said. I like, you know, we kind of had a little bit of that discussion last segment about everything Rod did with that under talented Rams secondary last year. Mm-hmm. And then we've mentioned what he did in terms of sack production last year with a, a Kobe Turner, a Byron Young. Mm-hmm. Those were third, fourth round guys. Yes. Those rookies. So yeah. just to say what you can imagine with him doing with a Zach Harrison, what you can imagine, and you know, not getting too much into the, uh, you know, kind of the mock we're going to look at, but you know, you know, spoiler alert, there's going to be an edge involved in the first round discussion. Facts. You know, <laughs> I mean, giving him a top 10 level talent, like a law to a reverse or a Turner versus third, fourth rounders. Uh, it's such an established floor in terms of what he can get out of his guys. Uh, it's exciting. I think that it's a good point. You know, everybody likes to really talk about what he got out of the secondary and the defensive line. I, I like to mention both. It's it's really impressive mm-hmm. and it's really tying it back to the question of can he build out this defense more and more with this mm-hmm. draft? What did I just say? Those were third and fourth round picks. You got two yeah. thirds. You're coming yeah. here in the fourth. This is more of a top heavy draft. The sixth, seventh rounds will be more kind of UDFA style players. It's like mm-hmm. you're, you're not there. You've already used some of that. It's yeah. The third, fourth round, those couple picks you've got, and, you know, when they're going to go early here in the first and second as well, it's, oh, yeah, he's going to come swinging, and he needs to. Time to cash in. Yeah. It is. Facts. Wonderfully yeah. said. Wonderfully said. Definitely agree with that, you. man. And um, that third-round pick, man, it did seem like a ham sandwich. And I sat there and wondered. 2026? We couldn't con- <laughs> call for the conditional pick two years down the line. But as I sit back and think, Still got country during that time. Mm-hmm. Cousins mm-hmm. may be on the edge by the end, depending on what happens the first two years. We'll see. Um, you probably will be looking at Jesse Bates probably looking up for a re-up. Uh AJ it, 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 being his yeah. third year. It's so, a guy named uh, AJ looking for a payday. Again. Uh mm-hmm. so I mean, just think about it, man. In three years, you have guys like Bergeron who will be up for a contract. So, I mean, I get it. When you look toward the future, you got to think about uh, your key players. And I think that's what they're thinking about right now. Uh, They spent most of the cap on Cousins, Mooney, um, and they still have to re-sign AJ. So, I get it. So, you know, they have more pressing needs. Yeah. Yeah, the money factor. Also, too, guys, just something to think about. It was a couple of – before the move was made, it was a couple of teams at the top of the Mm -hmm. NFC – that they could have traded with. I believe that they didn't want Hassan Reddit to stay in the NFC as well and possibly, you know, some be having a chance to disrupt their offense as well. I think that also played a part. It may be a small part, but I think it's a factor. I mean, you traded them all the way to the AFC to make sure they got good rid of him um, so he doesn't have to attack the offense again. And, then of course, the cap situation, the money, you got to make sure you have the money to pay the players that you already homegrown and brought in here. So. It's understandable. Very cool. Very cool, man. So I guess we're good with this. So now, ladies and gentlemen, is the moment you've all been waiting for. Mock draft time. Um, listen, the, the, the mock draft is going to be, you know, what we may feel if the Falcons could go in the directions. Also taken to note that, you know, the mock draft, whoever we take is because that's who's available there. I know there's a lot of feelings tied to, <laughs> tied to who should go where and stuff like that. Believe me, if, if if we had the opportunity to take everybody that's mentioned, we would. But we're going to try and key in on necessary upgrades at certain roster spots uh, within the, within the uh, the Falcons roster. Definitely, edge is 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 tops of conversation. Uh, we can say cornerback is also a a, um, a roster need. Uh, it's a toss up between right wide receiver and and the safety position at, at this point. Offensive tackle definitely needs. Uh, um, you know, some some taken care of as well. And, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, we'll go lightly through the ranks in there. So we're going to use PFN Mock Simulator. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen in just a moment here. And we will bring up this ever so important mock draft 
for our 2024 Ooh. Atlanta Falcons, man. That's crazy, okay. man. Before this year, I've really never done done the mocks and never just try to dive into it because I know those things can get addicting. And look at us. They can. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely can, man. So solo mock, Atlanta Falcons. All right, gentlemen, are we going to just keep it at normal speed? Everybody cool with that? Yeah, that's cool. Normal speed? Okay. Clint, you good with that? Yeah, sorry. I had the mic on. The no, mute. that's okay. That's okay. All right. So, boom. All right. We're going to enter this situation here. Now, uh, let me just pause this right quick just to talk about the front, the first couple picks, man. So, obviously, we all kind of are maybe in all in agreement. You know, the first three picks are probably going to be quarterback. So, as you can see already, Caleb and Drake May um, have come off the board. New England has been heavily rumored to take a quarterback at three. J.J. McCarthy comes to mind. Um, Jaden Daniels is an, it's also another player. Uh, you know, then we may see the run on wide receivers go in number four, uh, you know, from four, four through six, really, you know, with Marvin Harrison Jr. going probably uh, Malik Neighbors. Uh, and who else? Yeah, who, who knows for, for number six? You know, weird things have happened Rome, in the draft. Rome, uh, Rome Dunze, he's, he's another one. But I'll ask you guys before I, I click on any trades that you guys want to make um, to acquire more picks down the line. I know there's a very popular uh, trade scenario going around where it involves the Minnesota Vikings trading up with the Falcons at eight because they're also rumored to take a quarterback. So if, mm. however, the, this draft shapes, um, we could very well see that uh, on draft night, you know, where a team gets real frog and he wants to wants to leap up. I feel like Atlanta yet again in another year is at a prime position to to run the top half or the bottom half of the draft by acqu acquiring more picks. So, yeah, you guys, what do you guys? I uh, said, yeah, like I said trade down. Yeah, trade, down. trade down, now, see what we I, can am get. Am I tripping? Am I supposed to be seeing the mock draft? Because I see your Google search. Yeah, My same. Google. Do you he really clicked on it yet? Yeah. Hold on. Let me let oh, me, no, me go. I think he did because he was talking about I did, I am. Yeah. But on our yeah, screen, we just website. See. Yeah. Right. You were looking at the website? Okay. Give me one second. I will do this again. My apologies. Do 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 wait one second. Right, we're gonna share that. All right, so you see this, you see the Google, right? Right. Okay. Okay, I see that you, you see the mock draft. I see nope, that you it, clicked it on it, but it didn't. No, nah, man, it don't like you, man. <laughs> How about now? Okay, it's there. There it's you there. go. <laughs> That's it? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, here we go. Normal. All right. So we're in here. We're in here. Oh, yeah. Smitty, you had mentioned um, you want to trade down from 8 to 11. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, mean I would. I would. I mean, I'm I'm definitely for the trade back. I, I would. I, I just – I don't know how realistic it is that it's Minnesota. I think the trade back right. is more somebody who's receiver three hungry. I I, I think okay. the four quarterbacks are, are gone by right. – I think it's, it's one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And then either Arizona or, or the Chargers is who's going to get to cash in with Minnesota in, in some capacity. I, I don't think where who that is. I think for me personally, my excitement about a potential trade back is somebody that sees a Dunze or neighbors, probably a Dunze, mm -hmm. sitting there. Uh, you know, uh, that's forecasting that the Titans take all. And even if it right. isn't, if alt sitting there, somebody, I, I think it's it's either alt or receiver three is more of the trade back than say somebody who wants QB four. But um, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I mean if you were in a situation where the fourth quarterback was on the board at eight and Minnesota mm -hmm. hasn't gone yet, right. Terry and, and Quessy are both just playing like who's going to pick it up first because we both know who's calling. You know that yeah. that'd be that'd be too easy. So, Can't Clint, pretty easy. much what you're saying is the Falcons should go best trade available instead of the best player available. You know, you, even if you thought that's what they should do, that's not what Terry's shown us he would do. And yeah. yet he's shown us through the pick, <laughs> pick the EPA yeah. pick, that it, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. best player available. They considered London as well, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, right. No, if you're at eight and the edge – is a situation you don't want to play the trade back game. 
no problem mm-hmm. with it. But I just I mm-hmm. really forecast a situation where receiver three, somebody the Bears get antsy. The, the Jets are, are hungry to come up for one. A, a team as far back as the Jags are ready to go and try and add a, a, a big name like an Adunze for a T-Law, for example. I, yeah. I bet more of that. And I think in that situation, and, and this is assuming it, it's edge in round one, you know, I Got imagine it. them having a lot to and a Turner and a burst graded close enough to say, we'll gamble a little bit and go back. And we're happy with any of the three of these guys. Uh, I feel pretty confident in that. So I I think, I think, I think, because I mean, this would be the last thing I'd say. Take the example I just pulled out of the top of my head right there. The Jags, for example, way back at 17. One of those three edges Mm -hmm. is going to be there at 17. Man, that's that's crazy. Crazy. I, I had a, I had a mock draft with the Bengals. You know, it's, it's. I, I think that's more of the, and where it stands a month out here. Yeah. To mm-hmm. add on to what you're saying, Clint, I agree. I would trade back as far as I can to get as many picks, because even though one of those top three edge rushes, say like all off the board, you still got Darius Robinson, who I think is going to be a sleeper in this draft. He's still on the board. He's a three four in. And you could possibly use him as an interior lineman or a defensive end. So I think it just makes a lot of sense to trade back as far to see who gives you the most picks. Let's well, just keep it real. Okay, quick sit- to, oh, to your quick. point, before we get away from it, okay. I said Terry's shown us what he'll do. Here's another thing Terry's shown us he'll do. He's not going to go into the draft where he's boxing himself into having to take a select position in a certain round. And what right. I mean by that here is – if Terry looks up in the situation and he's traded back, say our example we're using, to 17, somehow the three edges are gone. Well, that means one of the top two corners is still there. Yes. Thank you, Clint. You're sitting there and you're staring at a Quinion Mitchell. You're staring at a Terry Arnold. Boo-hoo-hoo. We picked up a first next year, a third this year. We got one of those guys. And then we're coming back in the second at 43, and we're looking at somebody in that tier behind. You know, you use the Darius Robinson name. You know, the Marshawn Nealans, et cetera, in the second round. It's – He's setting himself up. No, he gets to be flexible. He's not boxed here where it's like we look up and the three of them are gone and we're like, well, we're screwed. No. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I like it. I I absolutely like it, man. I had a draft scenario to where I traded with the Bengals at 18, and I ended up in – and crazy, Latu was still there. I took him there, and then I also was able to um, also still get a a good corner in the second round because I had two second-round picks now. But that Quinion Mitchell, I believe he's the best cornerback in the draft. I know everybody likes Arnold and uh, maybe even some people like Wiggins. But it's Quinion Mitchell for me. If we could get a Quinion Mitchell, I would not be mad if everyone else was gone and we just got Mitchell. Or if you just decided that you like Mitchell that much to um, put him in the secondary someplace that we need him. I'm not mad if you take Quinion Mitchell at all. Mm. Yeah, he's the most polished corner. A in couple. Draft, I think. Go ahead, Clint. I was just going to say a couple angles to the Quinion Mitchell point. You know, he's pretty evenly split in terms of man and zone experience. But mm-hmm. you look at this raw and this late defense we're bringing. Going to be a lot more zone than we've seen in yeah. the last few years, mm-hmm. right? Dude, he'd be ready to roll. You know, it's like I think to your point of talking about oh, I'd like Quinion there. I think this is the Falcons' corner board behind us. I think Quinion's their corner one over Arnold. Uh, I think he would be. Arnold, I think so too. Yeah. I think he'd be the preference. And uh, nah, you're not complaining there. I mean, to, to bring him in and then really give yourself the ability to put Clark Phillips inside. Hmm. That's what Huge. I'm saying, bro. And the yeah. thing about Quinion, he makes tackles too. Mm-hmm. He likes to get in there and make tackles. He has great ball skills, good feet and hips. And like you just said, plays man and zone. He's going to roll. Well, and he's got some thump. And that's, you know, yeah. you kind of need, you yeah. need some of that opposite of Terrell. You know, you, you mentioned some people like Wiggins. See, Wiggins, I don't see as much of the fit. He's lighter in the jeans. No. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Lighter yeah. Support. Yeah. Need somebody so much man to man. A little more thump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then plus the best thing about him is because he used to play receiver. I know a lot of people or kind of like hung on that, and maybe he can uh, recognize route, tree, route trees faster. But honestly, Quinion can r- recognize route trees as well. He, you've seen mm-hmm. it. And uh, that guy, he has unbelievable athletic ability, and he's a strong physical corner for our beloved Jerry Gray. I would love to take, take Quinion Mitchell. 
Okay. All right. That, hey, very solid perspective on what the Falcons should do at eight. So let's see. Let's let's propose the trade. So are we proposing a trade to trade down or up all the way to uh, seven down? Excuse me, down to seventeen. See if we can force a trade there. Or yeah, I'll say one thing about PFF, PFN. In my experience, I feel like it's yeah. difficult to trade back. Like if you're the Falcons, yeah. if you're saying you want to trade back with the Jags. It's more like you need to be the Jags trading up. With trading up. Yeah. That's know? a good point because I, I, I suffer that Just same thing. Just saying don't like, drive right. yourself crazy yeah. sitting here trying to get it. To get. Yeah. True. So let's just keep it at eight. Let's just keep it here. We'll, we'll focus probably on the – Yeah, and then probably right. focus on a different uh, – you know, part of we the show. We could sit here for ten minutes line. playing, and it won't accept. Oh my it god, it, it would reject Man, everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Not to be captain, you know, down or miserable or anything, but it right. probably would. Well, here we go. Here's here's a proposed uh, uh, pick right yeah. here. Uh oh, all right. But, uh -oh. But, for the, I mean, but for the purposes of this mock, that's kind of lame because then we it lose is. the perspective on the second, third, and the first next year. We're not talking about that. So I'd say nah. for this. In, in like reality, would we do that? Probably. You know, oh, but for, for this, it probably wouldn't be as entertaining. Yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be. Yeah. If we had that twenty third in there, you would feel a whole lot better. More oh, so be part part of, yeah. Yeah. oh my god, yeah. Eleven and twenty two, I think the Minnesota Vikings have, you know, to, to they got take that. But yeah, I still all twenty three. Yeah, man. So let's reject that. I'm not doing any business with the New England Patriots. Hold on now, why not? Let me see. No, they like, way up at 34. No, they got, second no, that's they're way up at 34. Yeah. I'm not, that's why I had to zoom in real quick. I was like, what does that say? Because if it was 24, uh, I would crazy. Been. All right. Here, well, here's a respect. Do it. it. Do hey, it. Yeah, I'm, do I am it. doing this one. Are you do serious? It. We get back to back picks in the second round. Let's roll. Why do not? It. Let's roll, ladies and gentlemen. They took Teron Arnold with that one. Oh, man. <laughs> That's who you went with? Cool. Whatever. I, 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 I'm not doing nothing with the with, with the with Dallas. If you sit here and 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 no, no, I, I, and I like the position that we're at. We're at well, 13, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, England. We, I was gonna say if, if yep. you want to go edge, we gotta take them now. We gotta Lonzo take right Turner's here. Gone. Mm -hmm. Lotto and Turner is gone, but if, it, if if everybody can give their their point of view on on the constant battle that we got going on, is is Dallas Turner true edge number one, or is it Lotto Lotto true edge number one? I'm I, I have I, I I say Lotto is consensus edge number one, man. I think you talk about a a kid, sure, you know the medical and 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 all of that, but look at his body of work his last two years uh, for UCLA, man. Uh, 23 and a half sacks really has had had a uh, clean bill of health and he's coming into a situation where he had he knows what Jimmy Lake likes uh, from from his defense although they weren't incredibly tied to the hip because 2019 2020 was when he was medically disqualified and that just so happened to be uh Jimmy Lake's last year's there with with uh Washington uh, but you like what Latu and his makeup, his his pedigree, uh, the 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 repertoire of moves that he has versus what Dallas Turner. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you can work on. And, you know, he as as athletic as he is as an edge, he relies too much on his uh, his speed and power. And with that, he doesn't know how to properly use it. His hand usage is not as good as you would like it to be. Uh, some some people will say those things those things are coachable, uh, but You've had all this time to coach that up uh, while his time in, in Alabama, and he's still so, showing the, the same uh, downfalls in, in that aspect. Uh, and to me, Dallas Turner is really a, a one or two maneuver type guy. Uh, he doesn't really – he doesn't really set up the tackles as as great as Latu does. Uh, Latu has broken down some of his uh, some of his own film, and I've seen some of his own film where he's consistently in a game setting up the offensive tackle, and Latu is just baiting him to play his game and just become and and outright be the yeah. successor at the end of the game um, for for those for those tapes. There's one bad tape on Latu, and that was against uh, Talese uh, Fongu out of Oregon State, who's still on he's the board at 14. He's a dog, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, about say, he's a dog too. That was just mano y mano yeah. right there in that game, and it's just that was hey. that was great. And a lot of people like to highlight the um, Georgia game for Dallas, where you know he kind of beat up on uh, Armis Mims, uh, the offensive tackle there. But as it stands, 
I think uh, consensus edge number one is Latu, but I I like to hear what you guys have to say. Starting with Clint. Am I losing my mind or somebody playing the techno? Man, what you talking about? I'm sorry. I know, right? I hear that in the background too. I don't know what that is. It says the voices in my head talking to me this early on on Easter. <laughs> I hope not, man. Um, you said you wanted me to get going. I can start talking about it. Yeah. Y'all just said the Fuanga and, and Mono and Mono with lots of It's like, yeah, Fuanga will probably be next pick in New Orleans right there. Uh, probably. But I really battled with this edge one thing, man. In terms of Atlanta and in terms of just general. In terms of Atlanta, I feel confident that Verse is number three on their board. I, I think Verse is would be a great pick here. Like, in terms of this mock we're doing, I'm going to speak that I think it should be Verse, most likely. I agree with that. And I think it'd be great. But I feel comfortable that he will be third on their board, more of a 4-3 style edge versus the other two. You're right. You'd have Turner in that kind of outside linebacker, pass rushing role. Latu's got more of the size. I think Latu's their guy. Yeah, I, man. I, I do everybody too. and his brother is mocking Turner, and I get it. And I could very well be wrong. I think Latu said they want. I think if, right. if they looked up, you know, unlike us in this mock, if they looked up and it was like, we're not trading back, we trade back as much as we can, they're all here, we're taking our pick of the litter, I'd bet my cash on Latu. I think he's the best fit, and I think he fits the window the best because whoever it was, I can't remember which of the three of you, was essentially saying Lockheed's got much more of a bag, much more technically defined yeah. versus yeah. a Turner even coming out of Alabama. Really got more like two moves, really relies more on the power, the overbearing athleticism. Somebody that if you look at this little two, three year cousins window you created, I think you're more ready to get more mileage out of Law 2 now. And and this would be the last thing I'd say. Don't sit here and look at me and say you're scared about Law 2's neck when you just handed the bag to a 36-year-old cousin. Hello. Eels. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't the time to <coughs> say, point. Like, I'm nervous about medicals. It's like, nah, buddy. You, you, you're you out here. You, you you stepped out here. You're out here. You, you're in the octagon now. you got to fight. You know, it's like, we're here. Like... I don't see him being scared. I really don't. I think the medicals are checked out like everybody wants. I think the media is hyping this more than the league is. Yeah. I think Watu would be their guy if they got to pick the preference. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, so, yes, sir. Hey, man, another thing. Is definitely, gotta... It's definitely the need, correct? So I'll you if you guys are okay, I will go ahead and take uh Jared verse. But Chris, I'm sorry, you, you no, I was say just something? gonna say another thing about Latu, man. I like a guy who can come back from a, from something that he was going through, man. You got the comeback stories, the feel good stories. This guy had to work his butt off to get to where he is right now after having to be medically retired a couple a few times. Like it was more than once he had to be medically retired, so he had to work his butt off to get to this point. Give me a guy who's a hard worker, who will play through things, who will do the best that he can to stay on the field because he realizes more than the other two guys right now that football is not forever. It can be gone at the snap of a finger. So he's going to give everything that he has for you, night in, night out, play in, play out. I really believe that about lots. All right. So we're going Jared reverse here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going first now. Clint, you called it, man. Fuaga goes to the uh, Saints on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it mean it. It makes sense, though. I do understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, Fuaga went there. Point Trevor pinning to the bench and tell him to grab him a Gatorade day one. Hey. Oh man, I like that. I caught hell for taking um, Michael Penix in round two. Smitty, Chris, you guys were there for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember they were saying you messed up the draft or something like that. I do, yep, yep. I, look, man, I, I'm gonna go ahead and reject that. So <laughs> we got back-to-back -back picks. Now we can really do some things here with these back-to-back -back picks. Uh, definitely. Well, you know where I'm rolling. <laughs> Before we even start, you know where I'm rolling. <laughs> Tavondre, Tavondre uh, Sweat, a true nose tackled in a 3-4 alignment here is, is a very intriguing name that you know Jimmy Lake and Coach Raheem Morris can add. Uh, let's see what we have left for edge. 
Um, Brandon Norless is my draft crush. Mm. He is one of my favorites here, man. The guy that can play three or five technique, move really move like up and the board. Um, you know, gives me that Kobe turn of Nealon's my favorite Adam. player in the whole draft. Really? Neal, I, I, I like Nealon. He's got like an NFL guy, prototype guy. right now, man. And that guy, he can fit in any defensive scheme. I feel like, man, that guy's a yeah, he can underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we have left for um, cornerbacks. Annex Rakeshaw is Ooh. still here. Annex Rakeshaw is yeah, a Lassiter, that position. I think Lassiter is going to be one of the top corners in the league next year. See, it's funny y'all are um, saying that. I think Melton's the best schematic fit. Yeah, oh, sorry, Matt, guys. I, love I Matt think Hill. so, too. Yep. I think yep. in terms of that zone defense, like go Melton later. coming in here, playing boundary as a corner, too. I, I think – I'm not convinced Melton's not a guy that the consensus media were putting right there around the 60s or so. I wouldn't be stunned if he's 10 picks higher in, in terms of reality, in terms of the league. That, that, that's a board riser. That's somebody that it's hard to gauge where he really is versus, say, like a – you can pretty comfortably say where Ennis Rakestraw is going. You know, I think Melton's kind of the wild card in that scenario. I mean, it's definitely one of those three if you're going corner – but I, I wouldn't just toss him to the side and say, oh, it's Lassiter or Rake Straw. I think they'd be talking about Melton in that scenario, too. And wouldn't go wrong either of the three. They're all great players. I'm glad you touched on where they put him in the draft because there's so many mock drafts to where I see Milton in the third. And just once time, I actually seen him in the fourth on a, on a random. So it was no. just, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm with he, you. On he's that. not making it to day three. That's not happening. He, not at all. Yeah, I don't think so at all. Day three, no way, no how. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not at all. Mm -mm. That, that kid's good. And the thing about it is you're not going to have to do too much to uh, get – oh, Lord. <laughs> He's going to get to the quarterbacks and pause. <laughs> pause. Berto, Berto is a Look, trip, y'all. Clint, Clint you, you made a fascinating point. Why not grab a Gatorade sit, uh, sit on the bench? When a guy of this – you know, of his talent, yeah, the knees are, are buckling. But he ran a four of a four six, has had pretty a pretty decent um bill you know a clean bill of health the past year or two for Washington. Kind of not kind of he does fit where the Falcons are going in, and it's it's more of a you know spread offense, passing the ball around, uh you know making plays with the arm, also with the legs, and Michael Penix exemplified that in Washington to a tune of back to back four thousand yard uh throwing seasons uh plus 30 touchdown passes in both of the years. So you get a kid like this that you can mold and have him sit under Kirk Cousins and really understand the game and what it takes to prep uh, and have this, you know, quarterback heavy coaching staff that uh, Atlanta has assembled and really, you know, dig their, their, their feet in the sand and just get this kid right. Michael Penix would be an absolute home run for the Falcons in round number two. Sure, everybody's going to frown and say, oh, we don't need quarterback. Kirk Cousins is not the quarterback of the future, folks, man. He's just a short-term deal. Neither is Taylor Heineke. Now, neither <laughs> is Taylor Heineke. So, Next year's you know, quarterback um, class is trash. Yep. To this uh, yeah. Boy, boy. Yeah, so I, I, Clint, what do you what do you feel about the Falcons going Michael Penix in round two if he's there? Because the combine, I mean, so excuse me, the pro day really uh, showed a lot of teams that this kid's ready to roll. Uh, you know, he, he showed the speed, he showed the arm strength, he showed that he can you know make pretty much every throw in the in the in the route tree that there is. So, what do you feel about Clint and uh, uh, about Michael Penix to the Falcons in the second round? You know, everybody don't throw the tomatoes at me, but I, I, do, I do feel passionately about this one. I don't think it's realistic. I don't think Penix fits the Falcons' needs anymore, and I would not be pleased. I think Penix is a great quarterback. He's QB5 for me. It'd be a good value, but what did I say earlier in this episode? Mm. You've opened a window. Don't play scared. I said that about Lottie. You, you, you're not playing scared. It's like you're not playing. You're not playing for five years from now. We're, we're playing for this two, three year window. You've gone hard on Cousins. It, it's kind of like the old quote about what was the Peyton Man, and they said about oh, he, Peyton gets all the quarterback one reps, and they say yeah, we don't practice when we're uh, f. Eighteen goes down, we're f. You know, it's kind of like if Cousins goes down, we're in trouble. You know, 
I I think you've opened this win now opportunity where let's let's just super quick a couple of the guys we mentioned just looking at that board. Yep. I don't know how you say no to a Max Melton right now. I don't know how you say no to a Tavondre Sweat right now. I don't know how you say no to a Marshawn Nealon right now. I don't know how you say no to a, a, a Brad. I don't know how you say no yeah. to some of the, those receivers available. I don't know how you say no to some uh, of the it, tackles available. But it's just, I, I don't think you, – you want to get a quarterback with some high upside you can develop. Let's talk in the third round with the Spencer Rattlers of the world. Uh, I just don't think – You've got to cash in top 50 picks right now on people that can start day one next year mm-hmm. right now. I don't think you can say no to Sweat and and, and some of those other guys. I just so – Sweat I at 43. I, I, don't, I don't think it, it's going to – get a corner. I don't think Yeah. I don't think Sweat at 43 and then corner at 44. Mm-hmm. Let's see. What, what's this? Oh, no. Oh, 49. Man, I, I'm going over. right through this. Man, I'm going right through this. If not, we're going to be here for 10 hours trying to, <laughs> I know, right? trying, to get, trying to get all of these. But, okay, so we landed to Vondre Sweat, you know, a position of need, in which a lot of people say, oh, we got graded, we got uh, David on your monitor. Yeah, but you know what? The depth behind them, it doesn't really look that solid. Uh, and we don't know how uh, Jimmy Lake and Coach Raw are going to use these guys schematically, right? We, what we do need is a true nose. Uh, in this uh, base three four alignment, and nobody's better at this right now. With Devondre Sweat, so uh, we, 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 yep. great, Grady and Anya Mata are great players, mm-hmm. but they don't have that wide backside like Sweat, man. They're yeah. big boys, but they're not a wide load like that. That's yeah. yeah. That's He's good. taking two people at the time at least. And and I'll I'll say this, and Devondre Sweat coming to the Falcons. The two people that are, that that stand as uh, beneficiaries in that in that pick is Nate Landman and Caden Ellis because now these guys can roam free with with a space eater in front of them and opening up lanes for these guys to to have free rushes, free blitzes, and just r- really hone in on stopping the run that much more. And so, Troy Anderson oh, can play down more. Use yeah, absolutely. Play. Absolutely. Use Troy Anderson from from day one and Smitty. I mean, you you. You've been there on my rants about, you know, Troy Anderson. Use him as an edge in some way, shape, or form as the Swiss Army Knife. He has it. He has the intangibles for there. So, Tavondre Sweat, the pick at 43. 44. uh, Hey, listen, man. Lassiter and Rakeshaw are still there. So, Max Milton also also there. Uh, And like Clint was saying, uh, you know, Max Milton – Fits fits the mold uh, a little bit better than Rake Shaw possibly in, in this scheme. So if you guys are good with it, we'll go Max Milton um, at forty four. And hey, I think a last note before we did this, we talked kind of about the pairing with Terrell. Look at those. I don't feel super passionately about any of the three. If, if y'all said we want to take any of the three, I'd say cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. Melton, yep. you're talking about like four four sub four four speed. Rake Shaw, mm-hmm. you're talking like four early four yep. five speed. Last year, you're talking like early to mid four or five speed. It's just in terms of a little more of the burner, this this zone fit. If I was to say what I think the Falcons would do, I think Melton would be their guy. Yeah, Melton would be their guy. Like All right, bit more it, feet. Okay, cover a little bit more. Let's a little faster. We'll go. We'll go, Max Milton. Bang. Hey, that's not so a bad pick, though, man. That's three the starters. Start. That's three starters on defense. Even if you consider Sweat as a two-down player rotationally, because you know he's not going to be out there eighty plus percent of the snaps. He'd be dead on the floor. You know, yeah, I mean that's that's three major. What what we talk about the win now thing? That's day one dudes. Yeah. Yep. Actual fact. The part, man. So Jared, Jared first. Devontae Sweat, Max Milton, all defensive guys. Um, on an eve of free agency where and you gotta reward jimmy lee police. gotta reward him gotta gotta reward reward Jimmy. Him. all right so we're back up again from what it looks like and at 74 what are we thinking here gentlemen let's see what we have left for receivers. going kneeling you're going kneeling on that let's look offensive let's see what yeah <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, do you guys feel like the Falcons should add a wide receiver in the early rounds, or is this something that we can? They wait probably they're probably the wait till day three. They're probably wait day three. Yeah, okay. A couple names on there now. You got. I mean, that you can still wait on. 
You got to take Nealon. I love Roman Wilson. I love Pearsall. I'm really high on them, but. Yeah, right, they got to get two solid edge rushes. I played the yeah. As soon as I seen Nealon still there, class man. I mean, yeah. I, you're not going to mess that up either way. Those are all great picks at 74. Yeah. But I'm, so, if I'm in that room, what did I say? I said earlier, yeah. that he's my favorite player in the draft. If I was in the Falcons draft room, I'd be pounding the table, standing on it while mm-hmm. screaming, telling everyone mm-hmm. we got to take this guy. So that's what I'll do here. It, okay. It no. Yeah. yeah. So Mashar Neal. So there, for me, there's also some other intriguing guys. Uh, Austin That's Booker. Fair. Um, you know, uh, you know, he's um, burst onto the scene really last year for Kansas. He's still a, a work in process, but what he has shown you is some explosiveness and then a good, a good arsenal of moves. To me, Jalex, uh, Jalex Hunt and Javon Salmon, man, these are two very uber intriguing prospects for me. Jalen uh, J- Jalex Hunt uh, from uh, Houston Christian was a converted safety, turned edge, turned linebacker, you name it. Wherever he went, he was successful. Allowed only 42% uh, of uh, passes completed when he was targeted. Screams a lot, you know, what Foyer Olukun was for Connecticut when he was drafted. And look what, Fo- you look what Foyer is at now. Another contract with uh, with Jacksonville, you know, very deservingly, very deservingly so. Uh, came, you know, was with the Falcons and balled out. He fits a lot of what, you know, a, a lot of that right there. And he's, uh, he's now an edge. I think he can, you know, scream off the edge as well. I think he can make some plays. Javon. On Salmon is another one, and Troy has been, you know, one of those teams that has trotted out some good edge rushers um, in the in the past. Uh, the only knock on him is his size. He's, I think, six uh, one. But in a world I've seen that has seen success at the edge with guys like Elvis Dumerville, uh, you know, Javon Salmon fits the bill, man. Incredibly athletic, uh, and has the sack numbers at Troy to um, to definitely have um, to make him worth a, a draft pick here, but. Mashar Nealon definitely, you know, the 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 top tier right here at 74. So we'll I definitely just, go. Real quick before you click sure. it, I would just yep. lastly say we're picking again at 79. Right here yep. you're playing the game of who do I think won't make it five more picks? Yeah. Who do I think will not Nealon. make it five more? Mm-hmm. That's the conversation you really got to have. Valid. Yeah. And I think Nealon is the guy right there to, to have that. You know, Chicago, uh, we don't know what the Jets will do, but, you know, uh, Oakland and Washington. And, and a lot of what a lot of people don't realize is Washington's defense is depleted. You got no more Montez Sweat. Chase Young is gone. You lost to Ron in a few years back. Jonathan Allen is rumored to be traded. So it's like you got to start rebuilding that off of that <laughs> defensive line. Excuse me. So Man, we'll, we'll march everybody that comes after us can take Nealon. <laughs> and, and, not enough, and not enough are gonna oh okay i said that there were the next two picks all right i'm gonna go jump out the window um <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we're back at it again we're back at it again so let's let, let's review the picks that we've had thus far jared verse tavondre sweat max milton and mashar nealon two edge falcons wow. double dipped in the edge uh department to pair along with uh d'angelo malone um and Arno Ebiketti. So I think we're good defensively. I, now I think we Gotta can start be a receiver. Build, yeah, um, start building that the safety spot, the offensive tackle position uh, could also be, have some some um, can you know can have some upgrades. Uh, yeah. Caleb McGarry, uh, you know, we can definitely start moving on from him after next year. And why not you know draft his replacement, Jake Matthews, the bloodline strong, but he's not going to last forever. Thirty three years of age. Uh, you know, ten plus years in the NFL and then Iron Man for the Falcons. He's he's gonna probably start showing signs of decline or, or slowing down at some point. So I, I would really like to focus on offensive tackle here. Dwayne Ledford, our offensive tackle coach, man, has done a phenomenal job with with uh, rookie last year, uh, Matthew Bergeron and guard Chris Lindstrom. Uh, you know, he's done some things with with Drew Dahlman, so that's another position too. But what do you guys feel as, about the offensive tackle position at seventy nine? I would probably go uh, with oh, double R. Um, I, I know he has uh, – I don't know a whole lot about him, not going to lie about that, but mm-hmm. I have seen his name and heard his name in, in a mm-hmm. good in good spaces. So mm-hmm. um, in the 
in this round this is what it's day three so yeah in, in this round i wouldn't mind but you also still got to look at who's left you know it's in the round mm-hmm. and start thinking about will any of those players be there in round four mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. who's going to be there in round four you know because it's going to be a minute before we draft again after 79 mm. very so, uh you know you know, we so we could go the 2016 route and and you know definitely start shaping the future if you want to if you want to say that Javon Bullard is still on the board out of Georgia, uh you know currently we have uh, Jesse Bates and Richie Grant uh and and uh Demarco Hellams from last year, but Richie Grant's probably the lesser out of the two and Javon Bullard is still here as well. Uh Clint, what do you what do you feel we should go? Where should we go? Oh, and which, Cole which Bishop is there brother? still too. Cole Bishop is still there too. Uh, but I like to get Clint Clint's thoughts right quick on the direction the Falcons. Yeah, are. that's that's a tough. I say tough. It, it's tough in the fact that you've got so many good options. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, it but is. Very good. That that's tough in the fact that love the tackle idea, particularly from a swing perspective. Mm-hmm. And it'd be a, a fun situation. You know, I remember the first three names on that tackle board were Rosengarten out of Washington. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Agandeji out of Yale. And mm-hmm. it was Fisher out of Notre Dame. So you wouldn't take Fisher. You'd go for the upside no. play because you got time for development. Fisher's more yep. of the floor guy, those three. Yep. The Yale kid's probably the highest upside Washington. Agreed. Yeah, Rosengarten's probably the safer play. You wouldn't go wrong with either of those two, but it would be one of those two. You'd aim for the ceiling. Mm-hmm. I like those two options. And you mentioned the two safeties, Cole Bishops and Cole Bishop and Bullard. If we're talking yeah. about the four defenders we've already cashed in on, and we're oh looking at God. cashing a fifth in on one of Bro. those cats, buddy. Sign me up. Buddy. Like, yeah. Uh, that I mean, Bullard playing a lot of that nickel role and being yep. able to trot back at safety, he'd be a dog. Bishop, Bishop's a name. I, I've said this about a guy or two thus far, so not to be repetitive, but this one, Bishop's a name that us in the media and, and draft analysts, et cetera, are too low compared to the NFL. Bishop's going to go higher mm. than people think right now. I think that's a guy mm. that the league's going to be higher on. To your point of, you, you said a second ago, Chris, when he came on, you said, oh, Bishop's still on there. It's like, yeah, if, man, because I'm like, what is he still doing there? Real <laughs> draft right now, people would be looking at each other in rooms going, Bishop's what? still here? <laughs> you know, it's like, you would yeah, have Chris's that, reaction. A, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Bullard and Bishop would be a tough decision. Between, choosing between those two tackles would be a tough decision. We've talked about receiver, but I, I, I agree with you, man. I, I'm not mm-hmm. convinced you don't have to see if you can wait till 109 because – those are four great names to choose from. The, the receivers, I, I remember off the top of my head, you had pulled up. It was McMillan, yep. Tez Walker, some of those names. Mm-hmm. I just don't think mm-hmm. you're improving yourself this year, next year, year three, as much with that move and beyond mm-hmm. as with either a swing tackle developmentally or mm-hmm. one of those safeties. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like y'all. I, it might sound unconventional of what we expect to say, we still haven't taken a receiver yet. Look, yeah. Kyle Pitts is essentially a receiver. They've got big receiver two expectations for Mooney. Rondell Moore coming in in that third hole. A guy that you bring in at the 109 to supplement that, they're fine. I, I think, nah, I think it'd be one of these tackles or. Um, one of those safeties, man. One of those, thank you. I'm watching for a second. You saved me. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. mind going Javon Bullard here and really solidifying the defense. We've, we've, you know, we put so much onus and attention onto the offensive side that, you know, we have to remember where this Falcons defense was last year, ranked 11th, you know, albeit it was under a different regime at the time and a different play caller. Uh, and a lot of the players have returned Two minuses are Bud Dupree and Calais Campbell. So that's 13 sacks that just are floating out there. So the right. more solid, the, the more, um, the more solid players that you add on to this to the secondary, make it easier for the guys up front to do their work and work their magic and have Jimmy Lake and, and Coach Rob really dial up these exotic blitzes and stuff like that. So I'm all for solidifying the back end uh, with Max Milton and Javon Bullard at this one. And just a quick reminder, folks, it's the way that this mock draft is, is really falling. On draft night, it could be something similar. It may not be mm-hmm. anywhere that we're going. But since it's here and it's available for us, we're going to attack it in that sense. So continuing 
the draft as um it goes along. We we pick uh, next at oh, there. oh, they go to tackle. The tackles. There was a little small run on tackle there. Spencer Rattler left mm -hmm. to Seattle out of all places. Austin Book is off the board. Okay, so we're back up at one oh nine. Uh, and this may be an area where we start looking at possibly wide receivers. Malik Washington's there, Brendan Rice, uh, which uh, Chris called uh, Drake London 2.0. Uh, Javon Baker has been making his everybody. rounds, man. <laughs> yeah, Javon Baker has been making his name around. Luke McCaffrey, yeah. I know that the league, from what I've been reading, the league really appreciates this kid's makeup and versatility. Uh, he comes from a great bloodline himself with a uh, uh, little bro in um, – or big bro, I should say, in San Francisco, Luke McCaffrey, mm -hmm. wide receiver out of Rice is is a possible um, up for draft and discussion here. Uh, offensive tackle again, which really doesn't offer a lot of names. I think the best one in this in this class right here would probably be Javon Foster. Where is uh, Jalen Coker right now? Who is it? Jalen Coker. Jalen Coker is he an offensive tackle? Is there no, a he's a wide receiver. Jalen Coker. Let's see, Jalen Coker. Don't know too much about Jalen Coker, but he's from here. Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he what, has what some good route running this, ability. Man. He has a good, has a good route tree. Just uh, I just wanted to see how far down he was. Like he's not a one of a top tier guy, but could be a sleeper in this offense. Just like a guy like like um Clint was Clint was mm -hmm. saying at one oh nine, but you really can get him deeper than that if you so chose to. So mm. just, I just wanted to see where he was. That receipt, that receiver board's got enough names. I don't know how we don't cash in there. Finally, I, I don't know that this isn't a moment where you're in a draft room. Somebody wouldn't look at each other and be like, "Haven't we kind of gotten cute enough here?" Like as far as the waiting mm -hmm. on the receiver, right? Yeah. I, I just, I yeah. mean, looking at some of those names, Malik Washington's been a huge riser. Jamari yeah. Thrash is a guy flying under the radar. Just a very great much so. Floor. Brendan mm -hmm. Rice, you, you mentioned the pedigree thing, thing. You know, poor kid. We can't mention his name without mentioning his dad. You know, yeah. some nice length there. Javon Baker, yeah, I'm going to be a tool for a second. I was in on Baker before the crowd. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like, I like I Baker. In terms of I getting do. some physical size to pair with London, to pair with some of these more scat speed receivers and Mooney and Moore. They've got Baker at 144. He's not lasting a 144 in reality. I'll disagree with them there. Oh. They do phenomenal work at PFN. I, I believe this is Ian Cummings' ratings. Mm -hmm. I disagree there. I think 144, I, I don't know. That's somebody I'd throw his name. And you mentioned McCaffrey as well. It's like I think of between those yeah. four or five or six receiver names, I might be looking around being like, let's let's take our pick of the litter here. I, what was the other position we looked at? The tackles, nobody – the, yeah. the two I like on the tackle list, I think mm -hmm. one of them will be there at 143. You mentioned Foster. You took that one out of my mouth. And yeah. Christian Jones out of Texas. Yeah. But those got one yeah. of them's yep. the weight. I, my vote would be I think so. cash in on a receiver. Mm -hmm. On a receiver? Yeah, Let's do it. Go for that. Uh, so I, out of this bunch, I think uh, everybody offers their, their own upside. But I think Javon Baker offers Baker's probably the like Baker. of this list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Run Baker here, giving some love to the offense, and there goes the run on that. Oh man, Mason Smith, what a he's such a mm. polarizing figure to to go ahead and. Oh, Michael man. Pratt just went. Did he? Yeah, yeah, I was hoping he was going to slide a little one more time. Well, Kyrie Jackson was still on the board. Going to say corner, Kyrie Jackson's a my guy in that corner room. Hey, I love Kyrie yeah. Jackson, man. That lymph. That, that limp, he what is he six three six four? Yeah, man, he's a yeah man. He's six a big three, guy. about a one ninety two, one ninety five. Yep. Man, yeah, I mean, you're we talking, talking safety weight him. right there, man. Yeah, we was talking. Me and Smitty, we had a conversation about him a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. I, 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 you're you're not mad if you take that guy in the fourth round. Right. So here we go now. Let's let's review our picks as this draft class is almost coming to a close. We have Jared Verse, Tavondre uh, Sweat, Max Milton, uh, Marshawn Nealon, Javon Bullard, uh, Javon Baker. So at 143. That so draft is so filthy. I feel nauseous. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. It, like, it, it's just, it's a definitely it, – it's a good collection right here. Uh, so – 
Javon Foster's still on the board. I think this is a guy that right here makes a lot of sense to mold yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and just let him I sit agree. and just learn. Learn learn a little bit more. You know, we do have Storm Norton right now as our uh, swing tackle at the moment, a guy that can also slide into the right tackle position as he did last year and fill in some for uh, Caleb McGarry. Javon Foster offers, you know, a, a, a little bit more upside, a lot more upside, I would I would in my opinion, than than a Storm Norton. Uh so I like I like Javon um Foster at, at 143. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Phil? I'm on that train too, if you guys are down with it. Agree. Yeah, so we kind of have to take we we, we got to get we got to take offense here in some capacity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A, a, another offensive move that we're not really paying too much attention to is the quarterback position. I know we we spoke about it at the at, at the beginning. Uh, out of this list, really the 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 more pro. Now I'm not even gonna say pro ready because he's not pro ready. But Joe Milton the third. Uh, what does he offer? You know, he's a big kid with a big arm. Um, he has scrambling ability. He's, he's, you know, he's he's okay. He's okay, but definitely a project. Um, talk to me at 187. Talk to yeah. you at 187. If yeah. he's still there. Yeah. 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 Safe I, bet. I still even like Jordan Travis, man. I think he has a lot of intangibles. He's a mannerable kid, locker room type of a guy. He's gone. He's for injury. Oh, yeah, he's, he's gone, gone already. Yeah, Jordan Travis is gone. Yeah. See what I'm saying, but this draft sucks. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! All right, so um, let's see where we're at. Oh, oh yeah, so, so we're going. Give me some players. names there. Yeah, like, there is, there's bro. a lot of names. There, there still is unrelated to the Falcons. Like I could just Ray Davis is a rookie contract guy. Someone's going to get a ton of mileage out of. Tanner Bordellini is like a 99th percentile athlete on the interior. That's a day yep. three starting starting center up center. player. Late mm-hmm. is a is a Mack truck. Bo Limmer is going to yep. be a starter in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll say his name's there. That's what I, I man. I, I don't know Zinter, how many times we've said that this draft is so freaking loaded. You can like get Zinter is the Vor the Andrew Voorhees of this year that got hurt, but is going to be a starter good. somewhere year two. Yep, McCaffrey. The league's going to be higher than this. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, think he gets drafted because of the name more so than the ability? I, I think the kid's a good player. I mean, yeah, he's you know he'd tell you this. He's not delusional. He's going to get some stock because his daddy and and his yeah, brother, his brother, yeah. brother. But you know, he should. He should get a stock he should. boost. He should get a stock boost. He I mean, it's just like the Matthews tree. You see a Matthews, you want to take him. Because he's from that bloodline. Yeah, I think it's really cool that Marvin Harrison Jr.'s dad was like pretty solid. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I, there's there's names all over the place there. Oh, Muhammad Camaro is still on the board. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like you know, so that's a sleeper name too, and for a later round. Hmm. I like, yeah, I like him, uh, Camaro. Man, some names coming off of that. Tyke name, Smith though. would be a name the Falcons would like with some nickel yes, outside. Yes, I agree. He'd be a raw guy. Yes, I agree. Let's look at linebacker. Linebacker really not offering too much, but it would be another, you know, probably special team. Bill Foscio out of Washington's got some high upside. I like Cam. He's an underrated athlete. I know a lot of people yeah. high on Leofu, Marist mm-hmm. out of Notre Dame. I think there's a certain ceiling there. I'd rather have Bill Foscio personally, but those aren't two yep. bad athletes and linebackers with some serious upside and, on special teams could be demons to be sitting at 187. Yeah, yeah 187. Yes, at 187. Right. Now, you had mentioned, talked to you at 187 about uh, – Undercover off- cut. Uh, yeah. Okay. See, so I don't think Milton's board. worth a pick, respectfully. So, I okay. I wouldn't have been excited about that even now. I, I'm not in on Milton personally, so that wouldn't get me excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, as it stands – there's no quarterback probably going to be drafted and within this mock, just, you know, for the viewers out there, just for this mock, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's been mainly all defense and it's hey, listen, man, this mock is falling to, to our liking right now. So it is what it is. So at 187, how about the running back position? Tyrone Tracy's a nice player at 187. I'm higher on Blake Watson. I think he's getting dinged a little bit from some injury history, but, Talking about running yep. backs, man. You're picking running backs down here. You're looking at one contract, guys. I like yeah. Lonnie's got some good ability. Carson Steele's underrated. A lot of people high on on the kid out of Troy. 
Edwards is a child, oh, awesome, but yeah, you know, I mean, I'm like a lifelong Georgia him. fan. Edwards is somebody we got so much mileage out of. Jawar mm-hmm. Jordan is is a little speed bug, quick mm-hmm. kid. So many people high on Rasheen Ali. Yeah, even though he got mm-hmm. hurt at the Senior Bowl, and I know I'm rolling. He Y'all did. probably like slow down there. Oh no, yeah, no, no. there's no, keep going, brother. Some serious, oh, there's some serious, serious names there. I don't think it's a need for us go get a UDFA possibly. You know, look at some other positions, but I mean, there's some names there still. Not to sound like the yeah. the not to sound like the dork using the buzzword value, 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 but there's still value there at 187. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even once it's all said and done, a lot of these guys, if the draft falls this way, will be some, you know, uh, un- some of those guys will go undrafted, uh, undrafted free agents. Could, you know, we could roll the dice with that one here. So, but what's at 187, like? what's receiver look like still? Let's see. Mm. On Jackson. Smith is a burner. Johnson. Yeah, Aeneas I was that's Smith. exactly what I was looking at, Clint. Yeah, you know, we've got we've got the speed guys with Rondale and Mooney. You're bringing in, but you know, Jaquan Jackson's not a size guy either. Florney's a high upside athlete, but I, I'd probably keep looking around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, Anthony Gould. Yeah. Bub Means is another speedster. Another guy. What's underrated yeah, guys? Un- go very underrated. Him. Good. I hope so. Yeah, Bub Means is 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 pretty good. Uh we're so, not going to entertain tight end, are we? Uh, it was one guy who I liked, but he went way early. He went yeah. way earlier. Um, I'll say yeah. this. Tanner McLaughlin and, and Dallin Holker are, are two nice-looking players that are getting some buzz. That This kid's a sleeper. I yeah. mean, that, that's not bad, said, man. man. That's those, you know, kind of like, oh, we're not going to go tight end. I'm like, mm, those, those guys aren't bad, man. Let's go. Let's let, let yeah, screw okay. it, man. Hey, let's, let's do it. it. Let's take it. Let's see. It's a, it's a later right. round pick. And the value was there in particular. Exactly. Tied in with the very next pick. Oh, your boy just went. Olafoscio. Mm hmm. 197. Yeah. Okay. So this, I think, would wrap up the draft. Yeah, for us. Anymore. Yeah, for us. Mm-hmm. So just throwing something out there. Let's see, off center. What what the center look like as far as the names that are available? Uh, Ryan Uziel obviously is the backup to Drew Dalman. Uh, Drew Dalman, we'll we'll see how he turns out uh, in this year under this new scheme, offensive scheme, um, which may concern some folks because it's probably going to ask this interior line to hold up blocks a little bit more, you know, a little bit longer, a split second or two longer than what they're accustomed to. To holding up with so much mobility being there with Desmond Ritter and uh, Marcus Mariota in respected years. Now we kind of go back to that uh, drop back passer and, you know, asking these guys again, like I mentioned, to hold their block. So anybody here uh, stick out to you guys. Uh, for me, uh, Kingsley, you can uh, I can't say I'm going to butcher his name, but uh, his last name. But yeah. Kingsley here from um, from Florida is probably more, one of the more intriguing, intriguing guys on the list still has size. Uh, I think with 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 Dwayne Ledford extensively working on him can really work this kid up to be a a, a starter down the line, uh, you know, I, in, in the interior. So Kingsley for me would be a guy to look at. But Clint, I don't know what do you what do you got, buddy? I, yeah, I like Drake Nugent. I, I yeah. like Charles Turner. I like Kingsley as well. Andrew Rain's another name that's going to get thrown around. My only comment there would be: Look, they're not moving on from Dalman. They're going to roll out Dalman, and they should. I don't. I think there's other holes to fill beyond yeah. Dalman and where he is. And in terms of mm-hmm. Dalman is, in terms of centers, like a 98th, 99th percentile athlete. I, mm-hmm. I don't know that if you're to take one of these guys right here, you're not taking one of these guys right here thinking that they're going to come in and and hand Dalman a clipboard. You're right. taking a guy yeah. here with the ceiling of coming in and being his backup, and you know, good competition and depth in the room. I would mm-hmm. just be interested because of that to to see maybe what was still there on the defensive interior mm-hmm. uh, in terms of maybe getting a body there. And and the last thing I'd say is just you really got to look at these guys on this board and say, do I see more developmental traits in the near future than say a Javon Gwynn who you've got backing up at center wow. versus a, uh, right. a, a news you know backing up at center? That, that's really the question there. Gabriel Murphy. Oh, I got and, my guy right here. And Brendan oh, my Jackson. God. 
Nope. For me, for me, honestly, man, Sundita Anderson out of Grand Bay. See, I like Brennan Jackson. It's funny y'all said somebody different. I like Brennan Jackson too. Okay. What yeah, is it? What is it about Brendan Jackson's game that that you like the most? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna make my pitch about Anderson here. So see, like, click on Jackson's little like uh, profile thing. Yeah, it'll show you there. It got some good side. The 264. See, that surprised me. I would have thought he was more like 270 plus. Mm -hmm. You know, an eight an eight point seven RAS at this point in the draft is some really nice athletic upside, particularly with that body habitus. Uh, I, I think that's somebody who. It's kind of like could be a similar role to another name who's long gone, but like Braylon Trice. Yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of looking at this three four defense and some and some edges who aren't who aren't going to be that top fifty pick guy, but but could find a role for you. Hey, what what did we say earlier about Raw in L A. And we're not in the third or fourth round. I'll preface that. But oh, the Kobe yep. Turner is a rookie. Oh, the, mm -hmm. the Byron Young is a rookie. These high upside athletes. That he can just you. throw out there and they're ready to roll. I, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's just the name to look at. But, I mean, look, there's still some names there. I mean, Miles Cole is a 99th mm -hmm. percentile athlete. Gay Murphy's a lot of people like Nelson Caesar. I'm admittedly not quite as familiar with Caesar. I know a lot of people like him. You mentioned the Sundiata. That, oh, that's man. The I need to go yeah. give – I'm not informed enough to give an opinion. Yeah, so Sundiata, man, um, you know, HBCU guy, um, really wasn't talked about a lot. This is a kid that – had he been invited to the combine, I think he would have blew up the combine, man. This is an athletic freak. Uh, I don't know if they're going to ha have any details on him, but okay. 6'3", 239 pounds can add more bulk to his frame. But when you mm -hmm. pop the tape and you look at his highlights, the number one thing that pops about this kid is his his speed, his his sideline to sideline speed. Uh, the way he attacks reminds me a lot of what Tremaine Edmonds uh, does for the Bears, man. Uh, just a, just a sleek-footed kid, man. Uh, he doesn't get the love and recognition that he he should. But this kid right here is, yeah, if he's here, th this is a home run pick for me. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll throw my two uh, two two cents into this kid too right here, Gabriel Murphy. You know, you yep. watch Lotu's tape, oh, but man. Murphy pops. You keep look. You keep seeing like, man, who's this other kid screaming on the other side? But you know, right. this kid offers no, a little Murphy. as he yep. as he's more of the tweener. He's more that you know, uh, you know, defensive end, defensive tackle, uh, kid. You, know, you could you can interchange him in both positions. Another intriguing guy, and who knows? You know, that's Good something work. that may intrigue uh, Coach Raheem and and Jimmy Lake. But for me, it would if these two guys realistically on draft night is there. I'm kind of pulling my hair as like, oh man. Which guy I'm gonna take, man? But for me, I would take uh, Sundi uh, Sundiata Anderson in this in this pitch. Uh, I was gonna say you feel more passionate here than I do, so I'd say go with your guy. Yeah, yeah, I go with him, Chris. What do you got, Chris? No, I, I don't yeah. wanna. No, I mean I like the Gabriel Murphy, honestly. He had good yeah. forty, good vertical, broad jump, mm -hmm. ten yard, all things that I need on the football field. I'm not knocking mm -hmm. the other two guys because I actually like those other two guys, but. Since we're already uh, talking about them already, Gabriel Murphy, he's an athlete, man. Exceptional athlete on the other mm -hmm. side of a lot, too. He can go after the quarterback. He has good IQ, uh, aligns well. It's a lot of good things you can say about that guy, man. Good, Oh, good, flexible lower half, something that is important, too. So it's just in this at this place right now, 197, you can't go wrong with either guy. So, but yeah. I wouldn't mind taking Murphy as well. I wouldn't mind taking any of these guys right here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take Anderson on this one. That's going to wrap up this portion of the mock draft. As everybody go ahead, go, you know, it's going to go on and oh, take yeah. their guys. No, <laughs> he went to the Tracy, went to the Cowboys. Ain't that something? Well, Brennan Jackson to the Lions. He's oh, going to be God. a beast there. I mentioned how Nealon was my favorite player in the draft. My second just went Sion Vaki out of Utah. Vaki out of mm -hmm. Utah. Safety, Vakia. man. Yep. He, he went. Safety, yeah, man, like, but, safety but RB3 damn. upside. That guy was averaging 16 and a half yards of catch out of the backfield at Utah and having about five, six yards of carry. You talk about a guy that can get a 53 damn. spot on the day three. Vaki's a yeah. stud. A stud. Somebody going to get them a sleeper. Hey, that's what the draft is all about, man. And you know who, who's uh, who's better at that, really, you know, than than the Falcons, man. A lot of teams can't come close; they don't come close to picking these uh, mid round Ooh, gems like the Falcons do, brother. Oh, Logan Lee was still there. He went. Yeah, he just went. Tip Ryman's like a 99th percentile athlete, tied in for the Texans, man. Pair him up with Schultz, yeah. the nice. And, you, and you can't go wrong with a tip. 
you know, you really can't. So, and Mr. Irrelevant that. is a Anthony Gold. And well, there you have it, ladies if, and gentlemen. If Anthony Mon Gold had not been drafted, that would been one of our first calls yeah. for UDFA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Unbelievable, man. man. But there you have it, man. Here's, hey, here's man, our trade for the first one. It's not, a, it's not bad. Very defensive um, heavy. But, of course, you know, got to maintain the integrity on defense. Uh, so, with offense being shown so much love in the offseason, why not this go? This draft why asked draft? Jimmy Lake my question. <laughs> I said, <laughs> pressure on Jimmy Lake. Y'all cool. you know, are being coy sitting here like, oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Forget that. I'll come in here with the heat. That's there we right go. Here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh man. Kneeling, kneeling in verse. That's day one. Sweat's day one. Milton's day one. Bullard's day one. Baker day one. Holker is contributing day one, even rotationally. And then the two developmental projects on the offensive, Dang. offensive line. Yeah. Then you got Hammer. your right Hammer. Hammer. Anderson. Hammer. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's a Hello. day. That's you say that that's a B plus or less, you're a dork that's trying too hard. <laughs> Facts. Facts. I'm going with that. Oh man, I love it. We addressed it, it. We addressed it a lot of a lot of places right there, y'all. I understand people oh, talking man. about the quarterback, but hey, man, we want to figure that that out later on. We ride with Kurt. Win now, win right now. And honestly, even if we did take a quarterback in this draft, he's not. He's you know he's not going to play unless something happens, and we don't want anything to happen. So technically, we don't want him to play this year. So yeah, and next year most likely. So yeah, you know man, I understand the quarterback cool. thing. I do, but that's a that's a good draft, man. Like yeah, I mean it's a, it's a solid it's a solid draft, man. Uh, as most folks are see realizing now, Smitty had to part, man. He had uh, some stuff to take care of, so we right. went on and delivered Close the show, down. man. Uh, there's so many people in the chat, man. Man, thank you guys so much for joining this uh this stream this afternoon. Uh, I can't get to all the comments there, man, but it's loaded with um with comments man with good and, stuff you know from our good people <laughs> yes yes we definitely appreciate everybody that came out today to rock with us man clint thank you so very much man we had a great time i appreciate you know collabing with you and and, and having your uh, perspective brought to the table as far as some of these uh, uh draft prospects man so so much so much love and, and and admiration for you man thank you so much so much man if uh you have anything you say you want to want to say before you head out man uh please do yeah, I was just going to say thanks for reaching out and having me on. Uh, definitely look forward to collabing more in the future. And, uh, you know, I'd lastly just, again, you can find you know, my name uh, or NFL Draft Dome on Twitter. That's where all my activity is. Uh, I share all my NFL Draft and Falcons content there. Uh, and during the season, I do some general NFL, uh, but not much. I, I'm more on the NFL Draft side when it's not Falcons. So, uh, but no, thanks for having me on. It was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Uh, these next so four weeks are going to be great. It's going to be great. Full with news, full with news, man. But thank you so much again, folks. That was Clint Goss, ladies and gentlemen, from Twitter. Thank you so much, my friend. You have a good day, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Chris, man, what? how, how about it, brother? We hey, just picked up our first uh, mock draft of this uh the Sunday afternoon. I mean, hopefully we can we we can add up, a, you know, add in another one sometime soon, and yeah. uh, go from there, man. So a lot of people, you know, again, thank you everybody that showed up. Uh, CDX for Life said it takes one team to screw up the draft, man, and that and that really speaks volumes, man, because everybody's draft board obviously uh, looks different. So right. it, it's gonna it's gonna take one team really in that top ten to overvalue somebody that we feel may not go or should go in that top ten, and it just snowballs from there man so who knows maybe we pray on that and and we can we can get somebody you know fall to, to number eight where another team might feel like oh my god we need that guy and they want to you know come up and trade with the falcons who knows there's, there's so, so all, many, all it so takes is the patriots to take marvin harrison jr at three oh, and then next thing you know what the hell <laughs> oh man oh man oh man but before we part man again uh thank you to everybody that showed up today man we really appreciate everybody's perspective and view on this mock draft we went um we went defensive heavy, man. Uh, and yeah. again, you know, this was predicated as to what players were available. We didn't try to entertain as many as many uh, trades because, man, we, it would have taken us all day to do that, man. So many, so many avenues we could have went in, in, in that one. Uh, but Chris, uh, before you head out, let the folks know where they could find you uh, on your socials, and let the folks know also, please, what you have coming up, man. Oh, man, well, you already know. 
the show that's cool and fly to a one forever sports that's the platform on youtube we be generational because it's always time to be and we don't settle for less because you can always have more with the vision please come by and stop by man subscribe come chat i interact with pretty much everybody who who supports i don't really don't like that term subscribers so i really um uh interact with everybody who supports the channel and on you what what is it uh x twix whatever if you got you can find me a1 forever you can find me a1 forever on instagram and the real a1 forever on uh tiktok as i drop little highlight videos on there as far as things coming up to be honest with you um i want to get into so much content there's so many content ideas that i have but first mm -hmm. and foremost man i'm almost uh close to graduating um full sale university the brother. dan patrick program i will yes, be graduating sir. with my bachelor's degree so that's really where my focus is to go ahead and cross that finish line because you know it gets you get sometimes get close to it and kind of run out of steam but now i'm trying to come across that finish line like old school usain bolt so mm -hmm. therefore i'm that's what my main focus is i will drop stuff when i possibly can mostly it's been shorts and everything like that but that's just where my time is at because i do work too Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah man so you know work school content that's kind of my life right now and i'm just excited to be a college graduate like in a few man. months here so that's amazing man man shout be, out to you chris oh yeah man it's gonna be a full throttle from there man i can't wait for a training camp definitely gonna be a training camp this year and everything man it's just gonna be blessings on blessings on blessings amen man love to hear that man appreciate your grind man and definitely man when that time comes we we shall celebrate properly uh, oh, as you thanks, walk man. that walk that stage man uh before i get into any of my socials i want to give a quick shout out man uh, i had a, a a very amazing interaction with a with a fellow fellow falcons fan that coincidentally is from providence rhode island as well as mm -hmm. most people may or may not know i am from providence rhode island I like to take the claim as the biggest Falcons fan in Rhode Island, uh, you know, with such a small state with a big attitude uh, that as some people will say about Rhode Islanders. Uh, but definitely, man, Cruz is the young man's name. He's a uh, local artist, rap artist. Uh, you can find him under the name Cruz, which he spells it. K R E W dollar sign for his S and he's located on Spotify and all and Apple music platforms. Uh, and we had an interesting, you know, conversation. He didn't realize I was from Rhode Island until he, he checked the bio. So I'm trying to uplift him and get as many eyes to his platform oh, yeah. as Salute. well. man. So definitely, you know, always take the time to support your local artists um, if they're in your area and, and you can just uplift them, man. Cause you you know, it's, it's the best thing to do, you know, so just uplift and bring everybody together in this space. Another Falcon fan here in Rhode Island. I hope to link up with him one day and he talk Tell the Falcons baby. or watch or watch a Falcons game. But yeah, shout out to Cruz if you're watching or if you ever come across this video, man. Uh, but on that note, man, we'll we'll definitely part. I'm your boy, Berto, your host of the 95 North Falcons talk show. That's the platform on YouTube. You can also catch me on Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report has me, uh, man, has me going 100 miles an hour, man. I'll be on from April yeah. 9th and on every week after that, you know, covering the hey. NFL draft, you know, dropping Falcons content via the Bleacher Report app itself. And I'll be doing that also on my platform here, 95 North Falcons talk show on YouTube with my guys, Chris and Smitty. Also with uh, any other invitees of the future uh, coming up, we look forward to collaborating with, with so many other names uh, out there uh, for this um, Barbershop Talk Sunday. As mm -hmm. we're lately now, this has been a great episode number two, Mock Draft Edition. We'll part, we'll give you your Sunday back. Happy holidays to everybody. Happy Easter, I should say. And I hope everybody's enjoying a good plate of food and their relatives and loved ones. So on that note, we will part. We will well, talk holla. to you soon, man. Peace. Well,